एवरीवन माय नेम इज सुश्वेत कुमार पांडे टुडेज प्रेजेंटेशन इज ऑन द कैप्सटन प्रोजेक्ट सिविल बाइक शेयरिंग डिमांड प्रेडिक्शन यूजिंग मशीन लर्निंग रिक्रेशन सो वी आर गिवन अ डेटा सेट टू एक्सप्लोर एंड प्रेडिक्ट द बाइक शेयरिंग डिमांड एट ईच आर यूजिंग मशीन लर्निंग रिक्रेशन एल गोरथम्स इन ऑर्डर टू हैव द स्टेबल सप्लाई ऑफ रेंटेड बाइक एंड स्मूथ फंक्शनिंग ऑफ द बिजनेस दिस स्लाइड शोज अबाउट द बिजनेस अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ द प्रॉब्लम so we know that rented bikes are becoming very popular nowadays due to so many reasons one of the reason is cheaper rates so in order to earn more profit in the business there should be smooth and uninterrupted supply of sufficient number of bikes at different locations wherever it is required to fulfill the demands so let's go ahead and start predicting the hourly demand of bikes this is how the data set looks like these are the feature names so date rented bike count this is the target variable then our temperature humidity wind speed visibility dew point temperature solar radiation rainfall snowfall season holiday functioning day these are the basic details about the data set it contains 8760 rows and 14 columns there are some categorical features as well and there are no missing values there were no duplicate values as well so rented by count is the target variable and we renamed all the features like this in order to have better access to the names and then these uh, these all features are numeric and these are categorical season holiday functioning day time shift and the bike count is the target variable which we have to predict so this is the summary of the feature so date contains date then rented bike count is the count of bikes rented at each hour r is the hour of the day temperature is in celsius humidity is in percent wind speed is in meter per second visibility then dew point temperature is again in celsius solar radiation then rainfall is in mm snowfall is in centimeter seasons contain four values winter spring summer autumn like that holiday contains two values whether it's holiday or no holiday same way functioning day indicates whether there is functioning day or non functioning day after that we started visualizing the distributions of all the features so this is how the distribution of bike count looks like this is the distribution for r similarly for temperature humidity wind so we see that temperature humidity wind these all are close to normal distribution this almost shows a bell shaped curve however it is a little skewed towards the right and then this is visibility dew point this is sunlight rainfall and snowfall seems there are so many outliers in this it is very much pointed as well so after that we started checking for outliers we see that these all data points which ever are outside these whiskers in the box plot are representing the outliers we see some outliers in the bike count column sunlight rain and snow we treated the outliers in the bike count column by using standard iqr method and capping them and then for the columns like rainfall and snowfall we know that rainfall and snowfall they themselves are like a rare event in some countries so these data data points might look like they are outliers but they are not actually the outliers they may contain some useful information and we don't want it to lose it so we did not treat these two features we kept it like that only and then we did some data manipulation we added a feature named weekend that shows whether the day is a weekend or not to indicate uh, we kept wherever there was saturday and sunday we kept it as one and else it was zero in that column and then we also created a feature named time shift to categorize the hours of the day into three values that is night day and evening and then we drop the date column because all the useful information was already extracted from that feature then we defined a label encoder to treat all these categorical features so we replaced the holiday with one and no holiday with zero in the holiday column and then we replaced yes with one no with zero in the functioning day column and then for the time shift column we 
replaced night with zero, then day with one and evening with two by using a label encoder. And then for the feature named season, we created dummy features out of these four values by one hot encoding. So we got four more features like summer, autumn, spring, and winter. Then we know in the linear regression model, there is an assumption of linear relationship between the independent and dependent variables. So we just try to check whether there is any linear relation between the variables. So this is, we have plotted all the regression line between the independent features and the dependent feature, which is the target variable by count. These red lines are representing the regression lines. So we see that the R, feature is positively correlated with the bike count. Similarly, temperature is also positively correlated. Then this is humidity is negatively related with the target. And then this is bike count versus wind, bike count versus visibility, bike count versus dew temperature, sunlight. Then this is bike count versus rainfall. This is snowfall. So rainfall and snowfall are negatively correlated with the target variable, which is quite intuitive as well, because we know that if there will be rainfall or snowfall, people will be less inclined towards the towards booking any rental bike. Then this is bike count versus holiday. This is functioning day. This is also quite intuitive because if there will be no functioning day, then there is no point of any demand. If there is any functioning day, obviously there will be some demands. Then this is by count versus weekend. Similarly, by count versus time shift. This is for all the seasons. So autumn, spring, summer, and winter. Winter is also negatively related with the target variable. After that, we transform the target variable in order to have better distribution. So this is before the transformation and this is after the transformation first of all we tried to do the block transformation uh, but we did not uh, get the desired results then we tried square root transformation and this is what we got afterwards so we see that earlier this was skewed very much but now the skewness value is decreased a little bit and it has become comparatively more close to normal distribution so let's proceed further. We know that uh, there is another assumption in the linear regression model that there should be no multicollinearity between the independent variables. So that is why we try to treat the multicollinearity analysis. We have plotted the correlation heat map to visualize the correlations between all the features. So this is our, we see that uh, there are some high correlations there is a very high correlation between R column and the time shift column. That is because we created this time shift column from the R itself. Then there is also very high correlation between temperature and the dew temperature. So in this case, we can drop one of these two. So since we created this time shift from the R column, we can, we'll have to drop this R column. And then similarly for the temperature, we may drop either the temperature or the dew temperature because these two are highly correlated with each other. So we see that the temperature column, the degree of correlation between temperature and bike count, which is the target variable is 0 0.53. Whereas for the dew temperature, it is 0 0.37 only. So we see that this dew temperature carries less information about the variance in the bike count. So we can drop this dew temperature and we can keep this temperature. Like this, we can keep on excluding features which are not, uh, which are less correlated with the target variable, but are highly correlated with other independent features. So we see that this dew point is also correlated with this summer and winter. So this is one way, there is another way to deal with multicollinearity. Let's try to see that in the next slide. So these are the variable names and these are the VIF factors. So VIF is the variance inflation factor, which determines the strength of correlation between the independent variables. So 
we kept the threshold of vif to be 10 and whatever variable whose vif value was greater than 10 we just uh, kept on excluding one by one that particular feature from the data set and kept on checking the vif for remaining features so in order to exclude the features which were highly correlated with other features so after doing that we obtained following results so this is the final result all the features whose vif was more than 10 has been excluded and now finally we were left with these many features we see that the vif factor of all the features are less than 10 now so now we are in good shape we are good to go then this is after updating the data set removing the highly correlated features this is the updated correlation heat map we see that it seems pretty good there are not much high correlations and then since we did some feature engineering data manipulation and we also dropped some features again we tried to visualize the linear relation between the independent and dependent variables so this is bike count versus temperature this is wind visibility sunlight rain snow which we already saw all years but since we treated outliers so we just visualized it once again and this is bike count versus time shift this is autumn spring and then after checking all these details we started uh, proceeding further so we did the scaling of the features in order to scale the data between zero to one range we did normalization using min max scalar and then as a prerequisite of the model building we created a function named analyze model which takes the model and xy splits train test splits of the data and prints all the evaluation matrix along with the feature importance based on the different algorithms used and we also predefined the range of hyperparameters which we used later for hyperparameter tuning in the grid search so these are the range of hyperparameters that we predefined so first of all we built a simple linear model in order to get the overall idea about how the data is performing so this is what we got these are the evaluation metrics so we got approximately 60 percent of r2 score this shows 0.58 on the train set and on the test set it's 0.59 then this is adjusted r square is 0.589 mean squared error is this much and then these are the feature importance we just plotted the beta coefficients the absolute values of all the beta coefficients so that will give us an overall intuition about which feature is influencing more towards the prediction of the bike count so we see that functioning day is the most influencing feature followed by the temperature then this rain and so on and this we plotted the actual bike count versus the predicted bike count so this orange line shows the actual one and this blue one is for the predicted so this is the result what we got so in order to enhance the performance further we tried some complex models as well since the simple linear model was not performing that good it's only giving around 60 percent accuracy so we proceeded further with the decision tree algorithm so on these configurations we got these results so it's giving approximately 72 to 75% of R2 score. And then according to the decision tree, these are the feature importances. So temperature is the most important feature according to decision tree. And then functioning day comes next. And then after that, humidity and so on. And this is actual versus predicted. So it performs quite well as compared to the linear regression model. But since we wanted to increase the performance well, we, we also wanted to enhance the R2 score a little bit more. We also tried some ensemble of decision trees. So let's have a look. We tried random forest regressor. So 
we did uh, first of all we did hyperparameter tuning then we got these set of uh, these best set of hyperparameters so on these configuration which is max depth 10 uh, min sample leaf 40 and these are details we got uh, these results so it's it gives around 75 percent r2 score 0.75 and this is actual versus predicted we also experimented with XGBoost regressor. So we did on doing hyperparameter tuning, we got these best set of hyperparameters. So learning rate, we got 0 0.05, max depth 8. We see that the this random forest regressor was going, uh, taking max depth as 10. And while XGBoost, without going much deeper, it is giving actually better results as compared to the or random forest. We see that uh, it is giving 82% uh, R2 score on the test data. And the most important feature according to XGBoost regressor is the functioning day followed by uh, winter. And then this is rain and so on. This is actual versus predicted. It is giving quite decent results. We see that the root mean squared error is also very, very low. It's only 242.7. But we also experimented with gradient boosting regressor in order to, uh, we just wanted to visualize whether we get any better performance than XGBoost or not. So this is actual versus predicted graph. These are the feature importance. And these are the best set of hyperparameters, which we got after hyperparameter tuning. So max depth 10. This is also going much deeper as compared to the XGBoost regressor. And this is also giving quite similar results like a uh, random forest on test set it is giving 0.81 r2 score mm -hmm. root mean squared error is 248 which is quite close to xg boost only but it's a little uh, the error is quite uh, high as compared to xg boost so temperature is again the most important feature for this algorithm as well so on the basis of these algorithms whatever we experimented we got these conclusions so since we saw that there was uh, not much good linear relation between the independent and dependent variable so the simple linear model was not performing well however as we saw that tree based algorithms was performing quite well on this data functioning day was the most important feature for the linear regression and temperature was the second most important feature Temperature was most important for decision tree, random forest, and gradient boosting regressor as well. While the functioning day was important for the XG boost, and winter was also considered important feature. And for XG boost, winter was important feature. So winter is also a function of temperature only. So we see for almost all the algorithms, it is considering temperature as the most important factor in order to predict the number of rental bike counts demands so this just gives an overall idea about the important features and by the way these the feature importance whatever we have plotted for gradient boosting regressor and xg boost and all the ensemble of decision trees these are just giving the global importance uh, based on the average of all the so individual trees in that ensemble. So from these, we saw that XGBoost regressor gave us the least root mean squared error, which was 242.72. So that can be considered as the uh, best model for the given problem. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you like the straightforward approach used in this presentation video.